When arriving to Denise Yoakum's memorial service, the first thing you'll notice is the large crowd of happy people, indicated by their wide smiles and hearty laughter. You might catch yourself thinking, wait, isn't this a memorial service? Only to be quickly reminded that often for the dearly loved and departed, memorials are a celebration of life. Yoakum had dedicated 13 years of hers to Pierce College, and with how packed the fireside lobby is right now, you clearly see she didn't take a second of her time for granted. She majored in speech and communications, had a history in coaching debate, while being captain of her own team in college. You can only imagine how her love for communicating with others reflects in this moment now. There's no trace of a somber tone in the air, met without an accompanying feeling of warmth and embrace. Even in not knowing Yoakum personally, taking one second to observe the types of people here and the interactions they're having, you'll instantly begin to understand the gravity of Yoakum's influence. Her influence to communicate and connect shows clearly in the sheer volume of the conversations being had in this lobby. By just listening to the energy in this room, you start to imagine the types of interactions Yoakum had with these people, her people. For a second, you feel as if she's in the room, uplifting and bringing people together for one last time. Once the hugs and the sharing of memories started to naturally dwindle down, you hear how Yoakum's message connected with her close friend and fellow staff member, Dr. Carol Green. During the years that I worked with Denise, I watched her as a daughter, a wife, a mother, sister, aunt, grandmother, friend, and colleague share the joys and sorrows of others. I saw her worry and cry, laugh and rejoice with friends and strangers. She knew how to be with another person and listen. She knew when to start talking and she knew when to stop. She tried hard to teach me that skill. <laughs> As laughter fills the room once again, you immediately notice how comfortable everyone is to express their feelings in this moment. Usually death is hard to stomach in everyday life. It's nice to be in an environment that's open about it. This must have been the type, this must have been the type of space Yoakum provided. Dr. Phil Yates comes up to the podium to speak. You see how Yoakum was viewed in his eyes, the eyes of a close friend, and understand how many of her other close friends must have looked at her in this way too. I envision Denise now as wearing the golden crown of eternal life. I think of her as a gem, as a precious, rare, one of a kind, truly original, precious, beautiful gem. Mr. Mark Haskins is the next speaker. He wasn't one who knew Denise for his entire life. He didn't know her before she had cancer either. He speaks about the first time he met Denise and how that moment shaped their friendship moving forward. Listen to his conviction when remembering his dear friend and know that even if you haven't known someone for all your life, meeting them can still change yours. The other thing I remember is that she was surprisingly candid about the hiring process, including my competition. So I don't know if there's some HR folks that are squirming in their seats a little bit right now. Uh, but for me, it was like, wait, is she giving me her trust in our very first meeting? This is somebody I could work for. But it was... <laughs> It was such a joy when she visited us and reflected her genuine pride over the latest hard-won enrollment gain or milestone in student textbook savings. She lavished praise and gratitude on the team, almost as if she wasn't afraid of what might happen by doing so. Uh, and think about it, how much goodness, how much of our own inner Denise do we subdue out of fear? After the tributes were said and a short video of touching moments were shared, everyone departed to the cafeteria and carried their spirits with them. The tone became even more vibrant and alive as bread was being broken and some reflection was being had. You found it easy to make eye contact, often spurring others to come to you and, sh and share how they personally knew Yoakum. You get a first-hand account of the types of interactions Yoakum was having with her people and how it almost felt like a tribe with how connected everyone was. Mr. Ben Gomes was a close and dear friend of Yoakum's. While they worked together in the same facility, Gomes worked in security and still found himself entangled and enamored with Yoakum. He chronicles his first time hanging out with Yoakum candidly. Uh, Denise and I are extremely good friends. We, um, we met when she first took her job here uh, 13 years ago, or right now it's 15. And, but she was an avid Raider fan. She showed up at a game. I saw them come walk in. I said, oh, there's the new president. Please don't come up here. 
please don't come up here. She sat next to me, and I'm like, oh, boy. And I started riding the referee. So Denise turned to me and said, you need to stop yelling at the referees. And I turned to her, and I says, don't tell me what to do on my time. And I excused myself, and I sat on the other side. Spring came along, baseball, and here comes Denise. And I go, oh, no, please don't sit with me. And being a president, she came and sat with us. And what happens? She starts yelling at the umps. Well, you looked at her and said, really? I can't yell at refs? And you're yelling at uh, umpires? And she laughed. And just, you know, she had that laugh. And that was the beginning of our friendship. Denise Yoakum gave 13 of her years to Pierce, but spent the entirety of her life connecting and loving and sharing herself with the world until it brought her to our very own camp. She was a lover of animals, of her friends, of her family, and her school, and her students. She will be dearly missed, but also fondly remembered. Thank you for the time.